from out of the Southwest Conference. The Mustangs of SMU and the Big 8 Conference champions, Oklahoma Sooners. They've been trying to pinpoint the problems. They've fleece spec everything that they could possibly do at practice, and they've come up with one conclusion. It's mental. And we know, Keith, that at your attitude, not your aptitude, determines your altitude. So today they're going to get a peak performance out of these guys. All right. What does Oklahoma have to win? A ball game. What do they have to lose? Their chance at the national championship. They have everything to lose. And Switzer is worried. I spent yesterday with it. He says that SMU is a sleeping giant. And look at Barry's position. He has already clinched the, the Orange Bowl bid, the Big 8 championship. Normally, the season is over. So he's got to reach back and get his team to come out with another great effort after normal season would be over. He's worried, and he has every right to be. Well, let's see if it's eggshells or artificial turf. We'll find out in just a moment in Norman, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt on the sidelines, and I have mentioned the fact, or Keith Jackson has mentioned the fact, that Oklahoma quarterback Jamel Holloway spent part of this week in the infirmary. He left practice early Wednesday. He missed practice on Thursday and checked out of the infirmary yesterday. I have just spoken with Jamel. He says he feels 100%, and he feels very sharp as far as his passing is concerned and his running. Then I spoke to Barry Switzer, the head coach at Oklahoma, asked if he was concerned at all about the stamina of Jamel Holloway, and he said absolutely not. The only thing sore right now Alan Jamel may be his derriere where he received a shot of vitamin B12. One other note from down here on the sidelines. There is a tremendous wind blowing right now and it is swirling down here at midfield. That may affect the kicking game today. And let me update you on another score very quickly. Army has now come back to tie. Navy 7-7 is the score there. And we're all set down here, Keith. I hope you are up there. Well, we'll muddle along, Timmy. <laughs> that other Keith Jackson, incidentally, also had two days in the infirmary, so the Sooner squad has been bothered by flu problems this week. At least two of their key people, and Oklahoma will be kicking off while SMU will receive. Very important thing, I think, here in the early going in the ball game that is as fragile as this one. There is no definitive character for this ball game at this particular juncture, Frank. But if SMU should take the first possession and stick it in the end zone, I'd start uh, getting a hold of something solid. Their emotions would be so high, Keith, they would play better than they have any time this year. You'd hit it right on the head, the starting point for SMU to stay and have a chance in this ball game, keep the ball, thereby keeping that great Oklahoma offense over on the bench. That's the way to stop the Oklahoma offense. Tim Lasher hangs it up in the air toward the corner man. Sliding over is Andrew Livingston, a junior out of Fort Worth, Texas. And you don't get back to the 20 all that often against Oklahoma. He stopped at the 18. Don King is in at quarterback for SMU. Reggie Dupart, he's a 200-pounder. Gary Hashaway is the fullback at 195. Ron Morris is the flanker at 6'2", 190. And Jeffrey Jacobs is the split in at 6'3", and 205. SMU wearing the white on the rope. From the 18, first down. Pitch it out, option play. At, it's a form of a wishbone option type play, except it just doesn't have the, the particular mechanics. 235 is Albert Reese's weight. Craig Kennington is 275 at tackle. Kevin McKinney, 260 at guard. Mike Eitzen, 265 at center. The other guard is Dave Richards, 300 pounder. Biggin and Roy Dunn, 270. So they pick up on the play, a first down, as the ball comes out for the 28-yard line, and the Ponies now have some room. Don King turns it up the middle and pops out of there and gets out to about the 37-yard line, where he is brought down by Derek White, the cornerback. Reed, Tupper, Casillas, Brian Murphy, just about as good as you want up on that front. Miliazzo and Bosworth aren't too bad either. The defensive secondary, you've got David Beckers moving in there at the free safety today. And uh, he's made the move ahead of uh, Tony Raybert. They seem to think uh, that uh, David might be a little better on the pass. Second down and two for SMU. As they give the ball to Hashaway, the fullback, and he'll have the first down at the 40. Well, even though they line up in the eye, Frank, the SMU still retains uh, some of the basic characteristics of the veer or even if the wish bone, I think. You want to exactly, call it Keith. They fake the fullback in the same area that Oklahoma does. The only difference, instead of the lead back, they have a tight end. 
as the extra blocker, and they've made good yardage in the two times they've run the option play. From the 40, first down. They send Morris in motion past the ball, right it to the fullback. Quarterback team keeps it across midfield, and we'll have a first down at the Oklahoma 47. Keep the strategy that SMU is using, putting the formation into the boundary, and the motion man adds an extra blocker, and the Oklahoma defense has shifted to the wide side, leaving them short on the boundary. Reese making the key block for the tight end. King is a good runner. Don't forget that. King is a passer and a runner deluxe. All conference in the Southwest. They've done it all on the ground, and they've got a first down at the Oklahoma 47. And he gives the ball to Reggie Dupard, and Dupard will get five on that carry. Dupard is out of New Orleans, Louisiana. He is a senior, and he's had 1,000 yards the last three seasons. This is the most uh, unbelievable statistic that we have seen for SMU not scoring a touchdown the last eight quarters, but on the other hand, just as unbelievable is Oklahoma defense. Second down and five. Ride the fullback, puts it off with your card, gets around the corner, hits the 35 and goes out of the 34. That's another first down. When you have an All-American Lombardi Trophy winner, number 92, to see us, Tony, right there. How many men they got on him, Keith? Look at that. They got three men, and the fourth one is coming in. That's what we call the beer blocky. We didn't expect that many men to take him, but they certainly moved him out of the play. SMU looks good running into the narrow side of the field, getting Oklahoma outnumbered on that short side. We're going to have to send some linebackers here in a minute, though, yeah. because they're chewing them up. From the 34, pitches outside, goes to Dupard. Dupard to the 29. So their running plays, uh, seven plays, have been 11 yards, 9, 3, 12, 5, 8, and 5 yards. One thing they're given as we look at what Reggie Dupard has done, just outstanding. Good inside runner. We've seen that today. Good on open field. Instincts when he gets in the secondary. But Keith Edson use given Oklahoma some check problems and Oklahoma defense hadn't been lined up properly yet. Second down, about five. Blue part again, flips the defenders and gets inside the 20 and close to the 17 for another SMU first down. Sonny Brown, the strong safety, made the tackle. When you run into the narrow side of the field, Oklahoma has set their strong safety to the wide side of the field. They're one man short, but we get a good block by Morris, the receiver, and the safety man has to make the play. Brown, number eight, but not before another nice game. Good strategy by SMU. They've got Oklahoma upset a little bit now. They're great defensive team. That's Dupart has five carries in this possession and 41 of the yard. And their first down at the Oklahoma 17. King, again, Dupart outside to the 10. Cross the 10 a little bit. Oklahoma. And that's seven yards. Oklahoma made the first adjustment that they've done in this entire drive by moving into the boundary for the first time. And they played it a little bit better, but the bar made the defensive man miss the tackle, thereby gaining eight yards on the play. Now you see Jacobs were way wide and out of the picture. Formation into the boundary. Second down and three. Carrying is Hashaway, the fullback, the senior out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he gets pointed with Brian Bosworth, but he's down to the three-yard line before Bosworth can wrestle him down. And it's first and goal. Number 44, Oklahoma coaches say the best linebacker in America. I'm going to we'll be talking a lot about him. But right there, he's got to pull the fullback down, but Hashaway runs right through him for an extra yard. It's first and goal. Well, just inside the four, they go to Picard, touchdown, Mustang. Keith, what a tremendous drive against the best defensive team in America, and I want to know if you knew something. Before the game starts, you said they were going to score on this first drive. Look at the blocking, the fullback leading right there, hands away, blocking the, the linebacker, Miliazzo, 
and DePard showing that he's not only a good outside runner, he's tough inside for the touchdown. They didn't throw the ball a single time, which boggles my mind. The kick is low, but good. At 10 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter, it is 7-0 SMU as the Mustangs run the ball 11 times, go 82 yards, and they handle Tony Casillas all the way down the field, keeping the Lombardi Trophy winner away from their ball carriers, and who knows what this day may bring. Dupard exulted after his... Uh, Touchdown run, capping that 82-yard drive. Most impressive by SMU. And they go out to a 7-0 lead now. Kicking off, Randy Brown lead to Patrick Collins and Leon Perry. Perry is the bigger man, a fullback, number two. Collins is number 33. And it is Perry letting the ball go through the end zone. And it'll be Oklahoma first down at the 20. Jamel Holloway, freshman out of Carson, California, 5'11", 175. For the Sooners, Lydell Carr, the big fullback, 215. Spencer Tillman starts today, getting sounder every week, 205. And Patrick Collins, 5'10", and 185. Derek Shepard is the wide receiver, 5'11", 185. And let's see now what Jamel Holloway can do. On that drive, Reggie Dupard for SMU, seven carries, 52 yards. And he went from fifth to third among the all-time Southwest Conference running backs in the record book. Holloway makes it to the fullback, keeps it around the corner, and he's out of bounds, short of the mark, I think. So they're going to mark him over the 30, and it'll be a first down. Keith Jackson, 240. What a game he had against Nebraska. Eric Pope, 265 at tackle. Mark Hudson, 280 at guard. Rick Ewells is at center, 250, and he is not a regular center. Uh, Paul Ferrer, 260, at guard, will play some center today. And Anthony Phillips at 275. Anthony may have to play tackle and guard because it's in the offensive front that Oklahoma is banged up. So it's a first down for the Sooners, just over the 30. Ball is loose on the ground, and SMU's got it. Nope, Mitchell. Nope. I thought I think that man in a Holloway white shirt. got it back. How in the world did he do that? I don't know. The ball, when the SMU man dives on it, Keith, it appeared to me that the ball slid right out, and Holloway running a little bit of a counterplay. Cornelius Dozier. He had the ball, but uh, he didn't end up with it. What happened hmm. in the. Let's see if we can carefully look and see. Yeah, Holloway just took it away from him. He sure did. Just pulled it out of his hand. So they are lucky. Second down and nine. Outside it goes this time to Spencer Tillman. Spencer Tillman finally getting his health back after being aggravated by a hamstring pull for the better part of two seasons. The defensive unit for SMU, Man, Ball, and Johnson, the down people. Jerry Ball, when he's on his game, number 34, is keep about going, as keep well, he's the only guy in the country probably that uh, two guys that might be considered better at that particular position would be uh, Tony Casillas and Mike Root. Roderick Jones, incidentally, is not in there as quarterback. He came up with a sprained ankle apparently in the warm-up and is not on the field. On third down and about a yard and a half, Tillman slants at the right side and the spot will determine whether or not he got the first down. Uh, it doesn't look terribly gratuitous, but we'll see. If I believe the spot is going to be close. But talking about the wishbone, what's making Oklahoma so explosive is the fact that the quarterback, Holloway, has rushed for over 800 yards. And that means the defense has got to stop Holloway plus both halfbacks and the fullback up the middle, Jackson on the pass, and the defenses for the last eight ball games have given up over 500 yards. I forgot where I was, Frank. You're 18 stories up here at Oklahoma. <laughs> you really can't spot the ball like you can in some other places. It is a first down for the Sooners, just over the 41. Holloway lets it go to Liddell Carr. And Carr takes a double thump as he moves it across the 45. One of the plays that Arkansas against SMU two weeks ago in the wishbone had success with was the fullback right up the middle. And looking at the film, you would anticipate Oklahoma starting with a fullback up the middle. Instead, they've gone wide and got the ball pitched better than they had hoped to early in the, early in the core first quarter. 
second down and five. This goes to Tillman. And Spencer will be close to another first down. He looks like the old Spencer Tillman now, doesn't he? Spencer Tillman was an all-conference player as a freshman, as Keith has already talked about, rushed for 1,000 yards as a freshman. That's something that um, no one in Oklahoma history had ever done before, but then he's been bothered by injuries both his sophomore year, and he missed the first four ball, excuse me, he was hurt against Minnesota and then missed four ball games, so he, Keith said he's just back healthy. Third and one. is jumped on but his surge may be enough jerry ball six footer 255 watch him number 34 keith he was a pullback in high school and our people in the southwest conference think he's the best defensive lineman in our conference right there you can see where he shot the gap he angled in between the center and guard and was able to penetrate and stop the fullback post the first down keith it looked like he got a good spot Oh, no, he didn't either. Fourth down. Good foot, foot. Yes, it is. Oklahoma's got a tough decision to make here. Whether it's first quarter, trailing seven or nothing, go for it. I think they'll go for it, too. That big offensive line and the pullback and the wishbone. So many times, defensive teams in defending the wishbone on short yardage get crowded up inside, and the Oklahoma's taking it wide and scored with the ball. They're going for it. Gabriel De La Garza comes onto the field. And out comes a defensive back. Or no one in, it is. They want the quickness of De La Garza. He is a linebacker. Quarterback sneak by Holloway is good for the first down. He just hitched up his wagon to Rick Hughes. And old Rick, like pair of mules, just <laughs> dragged him on down the field. Well, the one thing you want to do on short yards is run to the uncovered lineman. And the center does not have a man lined up on him, only a linebacker. So the quickest way to make a foot is right at the area of the linebacker. Good call by the quarterback. Ball is resting at the SMU 48. Mustangs leading in the ball game 7 0. Opened with an 82 yard, 11 play drive and didn't throw it one time. Unbalanced line, Keith. They're going to try to get it pitched wide to this side as a rule. Well, they give it a car up close, and car doesn't get anything out of it. And uh, number 13, Keith Brooks, a strong safety, had lined up over here, and he was anticipating the same thing you were because the minute the ball was snapped, he took off. He was going to get in the middle of that thing and mess it up. Penetration is what SMU would like to get. Defensive penetration into that backfield and disrupt the timing of quarterback Holloway. That's what they're trying to do. Ball has done it once and Brooks won. We've had 20 runs so far in the ball game yet to have a forward pass. And Holloway turns it in this time, keeping it to the 42. And brought down by Cornelius Dozier. Dozier got him... Uh, well short of the first down, so they'll be looking at third and four. Keith, on that last play, we saw exactly how tough Holloway is to bring down. An arm will not bring him down. It takes a shoulder to stop him. His legs are working like pistons, and he has power of a bigger back. A good four yards on third down. Well, they give it a lot of car, and I think he's got it. It's amazing, this particular offense, the formation, how quickly you can cover five yards. Keith, the thing about the wishbone is that they have six simultaneous threats from one sideline to the other. That's the triple option to the right, the triple option to the left, and that makes the defense line up in such a way that each defensive man is on an island, Keith. He's on an island by himself. He's got to make the play in his area, and he's not going to get any help from anybody else. Is that a Robert Louis Stevenson on it? <laughs> no help. <laughs> First down. Here's the blitz. That is what we expected Nebraska to do. Double Cornelius. blitz from the outside, Keith. Cornelius Dozier, number 99, coming from the outside, nailed him, and Holloway is dumped back outside the 40. The, the quarterback has, has no chance when there's a double, when there's a outside blitz but ball number 34 they th Oklahoma thinks so much of his ability that when they're going to run the option play they had blocking on him Hudson an all-conference player and Pope. David 
Bell checks into the lineup now. Tilden is out. First pass of the game on second down and 13. Ball goes to Keith Jackson. Takes one, gets inside the 30, and knocked out of bounds around the 27 yard line. Close to a first down. The one big thing, Keith, that's helped the wishbone is the offensive line being able to use their hands. They now have an auxiliary offense. This is just a double crossing of the end, opening up right in front of the linebackers. And right there, we can see that Dozier could not bring him down before the big, strong Keith Jackson made the first down. Ball is marked just inside the 27. Tillman's back in now. Lined up on the left side of the wishbone. Holloway looks for somebody to throw to. Nobody there. Now he's got to pull it down and run with it. He does something with it, doesn't he? Picks up about 11 yards. It's been a long time. It's been a long, long time since I've seen a quarterback that can be so electrified. Here's a freshman supposed to throw to the tight end. He was covered. Now he's directing traffic down to the wide receiver. SMU's trying to hem him up. But watch him go right through the, I think that was Case, the linebacker, tried to tackle him short of the first down. He couldn't do it. He picked up close to 13 yards, didn't he? Ball is just inside the 15. It's first down for the Sooners. They're trying to respond to SMU's opening touchdown. Give it a car the fullback. And Lydell is going to be given at least the 12-yard line. Since the first possession, the start of this first possession, SMU has changed their defense, Keith. They've backed their linebackers out a little bit deeper where they can help more on the outside plays, particularly the middle linebacker. And so we can look for Oklahoma to run more right up the middle. Lee Morris has come in at the wideout, replacing Shepard. 16th play of this possession by Oklahoma. Second down and seven from the 12th. All right, turning the corner. And thrown out at the seventh by Frankie Thomas and Monty Goen. Frankie Thomas being a sophomore out of Mount Pleasant, Texas, and Monty Goen comes from Tulsa, Oklahoma. If Frankie Thomas, the safety, as we look at Jamie Holloway, has gained more yardage rushing than any OU quarterback since Steve Davis in 1973, and he's only been a starter for what, the last seven games. He came in the fourth game. So he started the fifth game. Started the fifth game, six games. Third down, three. Oh, look at this. Leon Perry had lined up at right halfback. Previously, we've seen Perry working uh, with Lydell Carr at fullback, but Perry came in, lined up at right half, took the ball, and almost scored. This is double isolation. Lead by the fullback, lead by the left halfback. Good blocking on the left side of the line by Hudson and Pope, and Hughes, the center, cleared the way, cleared the way for Perry to go to the one. And it's first and goal for the Sooners. 327 to go in the first quarter. Holloway trying to sneak it in, I think, is turned away. Looked like he stuck his head he in there and the ball, busted him. And, uh, he fumbled the ball, too. Does but he they still have it. No! SMU got it! Maybe that's why he stuck his head in the pile. He never got the ball off the snap. Well, SMU keeps their defensive tackles, and Holloway tried to go in the gap to the left of the center. Watch him go over here to the left. He's trying to go all the way to the left, and the ball has popped out right there. It's laying over here on the ground. SMU recovers it and stops the drive. Whoa, is that a turnaround, folks? At 3.07 to go, first quarter. 79 yards. No cigar. Here's what caused the fumble. Seems to be right here that the offensive guard gets knocked back just a little bit, and as Holloway is trying to go outside of the guard, which is dangerous for the quarterback, he doesn't have quite the momentum or the, or the push in his legs to gain any strength, so the ball was fumbled and SNU recovered. At their own one-yard line. So here come the Mustang. Now let's see. Gary Hashaway, Bobby Morrison, Jeff Atkins opens at the deep back position, but they stay up front with Hashaway, the fullback. And Gary will have a yard out to the two. Jeff Atkins has been pretty much splitting the time. 
SMU had been very successful, Keith, as you were about to get out, about one, with uh, the tailback splitting the time. They did that with James and Dickerson, one big with them uh, alternating, and they've done the same thing three years with uh, Atkins and Depard. Depard gets to stay in a little bit more, a little bit more in the fourth quarter than Atkins. Well, Depard has not come back in, and Atkins has come up. On second down and nine, Reggie has the ball. Wraps it up in both arms and gets out close to the five. Keith, I'm not saying that we should take, uh, that uh, SMU should take big gambles right here, uh, but some risk taking is essential for SMU to win this ball game. In that first quarter drive, they pitch the ball on the option play five different times and make big games out of it. A little play action pass, all tackle fake and throw deep. Might be in order here. Anything that would happen to get, keep the possession of the ball, at least make one more first down before they have to punt in the win. Dupart and Atkins both in there now as King goes down the line with it. Keeps it on the corner, and the Sooners bury it. Steve Bryan and Derek White in particular. And so the Ponies now will punt it. Anytime that the SMU fakes up the middle, they have a chance to block the great linebacker of Bosworth. He has to stay there. See how much he hesitated right there before he could get outside and make the play. Kick is up into the wind, not very long. Derek Shepard brings it back to the 35-yard line, the Sooners' good field position. That's it eggshells for this game. Oklahoma coach Barry Switzer says this about SMU. Everyone's talking about Orange Bowl, National Championship, Penn State, the polls, all these things. Here at SMU is sitting there with probably one of the most talented football teams in the country that hasn't played to their potential, and I think that this is their last chance to do that on national television because they're going to be off it for a long time. By that he means they're on probation for two years. First down. Ball inside the 35. All away. Collins. And all the way across the field, out of bounds, down around the 36. No, the 26. Excuse me. The play that Oklahoma just ran was the first uh, repeat of the first play of the ball game. It's something they added for this ball game. A counter option. They thought that they could hold the, oh, oh, the SMU linebackers and get the ball pitched, and they did. But keep going back to SMU on probation. I think on their own sanctions only one year. Television sanctions for one year only. So yeah, they will yeah. not be on television. They got being two years on scholarship. That's right. That's correct. <laughs> Holloway gives it to Perry in the fullback position, and Leon Perry gets inside the 25 to the 23. One thing about the option play, you can always double team the best defensive player. Ball is number 34, the best defensive player. We see Farrell and the right tackle over there, Phillips, drive him to the ground. That's the one thing you can do on the wishbone because your option is not blocking the tackle in. Got him a first down at the SMU 23. They had it first and goal on the one. Ball go and coughed it up as Holloway fumbled it away. Up the middle goes Perry. First down and goal, Oklahoma, at the SMU 6. What a great read by the young quarterback. The quarterback on the triple option reads himself to the outside. But when the fullback fakes up there and the defensive end is coming for him, right here you see the defensive end hit Holloway. But whoa, what's happened? The fullback, Perry, has the ball. They get him down on the 6. I think Holloway's going to call his own number this time. <laughs> he got hit right in the bread bank. And they go to Perry, who lines up at the right halfback position. So you've got two fullbacks. You've got the bull backfield in there for Oklahoma Leon. with uh, Lydell Carr and Leon Perry. Carr was the starting fullback last year, and Perry's been alternating with him for the last four or five games. But Perry was really a halfback in high school and was a halfback for Oklahoma in the first three ball games, Keith. 220 pounds. Ball is on the three-yard line. Army Navy even at halftime. Keeley got hurt out of the ball game. Army quarterback. And the first quarter is done here. 
So we have SMU leading Oklahoma 7 nothing after one. It's a 7 nothing ball game. SMU has the lead. Opening possession 82 yards in 11 plays. Oklahoma drove it right back downfield. But then fumbled the ball on the one. And now, having held SMU, they're back knocking on the door one more time. It is second down on the three. And Holloway coming down the line. Pitches outside. The race to the corner. And the penalty flag is Anthony Stafford. He's grabbed by the face mask inadvertently. Derek Reed coming up from that corner position reached out to get him because Stafford is a speedster. He's only a freshman, but he can fly. And he got the face mask. Stafford is from St. Louis, one of the fastest backs Oklahoma's had in recent years on just straight speed, 4-3 in the 40-yard dash. Uh, Reed is, grabs his face mask right there, and that could be 15 yards. Uh, Half the distance goal and a first down. That was twisting Keith a little bit more than was incidental. We have face mask. Ordinarily would be a 15-yard penalty, which is an automatic first down. First and goal on the one. Vance Carlson, the referee. Lewis Shuffle, umpire. Dale Shears, headlinesman. Walt Coleman, line judge. Terry Turlington, the field judge. Billy Walters, side judge. And Dan Upson, the back judge. Keith, this is a split crew of officials. Four from the Big Eight, three from the Southwest Conference. Two fullbacks in the backfield, Carr and Perry. With Tilden. Tilden. Touchdown. Impressive drive by Oklahoma. Here Tillman goes over the top. Both backs are leading. You have three blockers on that side, plus your fullback, plus your halfback. Linebackers could not penetrate. Tillman, number 20, goes right over the top of the stick. And it comes with 14.52 to go in the first half. Asher in for the extra point try out of hold of Sonny Brown. And he makes it. He's now kicked 59 consecutive extra points. Keith, it was either running, in, either running into the kicker or holder or either roughing. One would be a five-yard penalty. The other would be 15. Running into just five yards. Off. We'll be back, and we'll tell you what the call is when we come back. Foul. Running in. Seven. Bobby Collins, the head man of the SMU Mustangs, said run right to the point. This is our bowl game yesterday. Well, I think that uh, in many ways it's, it's like a bowl game. The fact that it's the last game of the year, we're playing a nationally ranked football team and it's on television. And we've had an open date since our, our last uh, conference game. So in that sense, it would be. But it's our 11th game and, and all those reasons makes it, you know, most important to us. Keith Bobby Collins has had a great career since he came to SMU. He's won, the team has won, what, 47 games and lost nine in the 80s. Percent winning percentage, just outstanding. And that first drive of SMU, that was as pretty as we've seen all year for the opening uh, possession. Now I want to see what Oklahoma, how they handle the second. Believe it or not, SMU is just now really going to get the ball with field position to operate for the second time in the game. They were pinned down there a while ago and couldn't do anything. It'll be interesting to see what Oklahoma will change and what they will do. That ball is kicked beyond the playing area. They'll come out to the 20 for the Mustangs, and here's Jim. Keith, here's a fascinating note from the world of college basketball. The NCAA announced today that the brilliant Indiana University guard Steve Alford has been suspended and will be barred from playing tonight against Kentucky. Alford apparently posed for a sorority calendar, the proceeds of which were to be donated to a girl's camp. And of course, it goes without saying that the NCAA sometimes operates in what appear on the surface to be strange ways. No Alford tonight against Kentucky. Yours, Keith. That's ridiculous. Well, that's one of the problems they've got. Ticky tack everywhere you turn. This is number 32, Jeff Atkins. He fumbles the football. The Sooners dive on it, and they've got it. That's the 37. Well, Jeff Atkins had made a great run. 
determined run. Second effort was fighting his way, struggling for extra yards when the ball popped right out. Looked like it was Vickers that knocked the ball out. Number 10, the safety man, but let's see. Just the old blast play right up the middle. See if you can find the crease, and he does. He's got the ball in that left arm. No, it's a Murphy. Number eight. Uh, it looked Murphy, like 39, knocked it out of there. And uh, I think Steve Bryan, 86, came up with it. Kevin Murphy's the guy that separated man and ball. Sooners will start on the 38. Call it. Holloway keeping on the corner. That's six. That was the play they added. Keep the fake to the tight end reverse. They faked the reverse to the tight end, and Holloway kept the ball. Holloway scampers, weaving through some traffic. But once I saw him out there in the open with a guard and a tackle escort, I knew he was going to score. Keith, he made at least three people miss him. He could have uh, been tackled for no gain by SMU. But here again, he, we see that he's hard to get down in an open field, not just because of his quickness, but the strength that he possesses also. This ball foul. Movement on the interior line on the offense. Still one play for a try. <laughs> the ball is uh, just inside the 15 now. This makes it a right at a 25-yard extra point for Tim Lash. Good. So he's at 60 in a row, 14-36 to go in the first half to play, and it's 14 to 7. The Sooners of Oklahoma go out to the lead. Now he had the flu for two days, that gummit. He's out there frolicking around like there's nothing wrong with it. Keith, they fake the reverse to the tight end, and then it puts Hollifield out with, with uh, Collins blocking for him, and he just cuts in beside, inside of Collins' block, as uh, Collins has blocked two SMU players. Here it is again from the right of your screen. Watch the fake to the fullback, then the fake to the tight end. Now Holloway's got it, 33. Collins the block, the offensive halfback. He blocks 99 back, and he, he ends up getting a piece of or crippling the tackle effort of Frank, Frankie, the safety man. Then the weak side picks up Holloway, and he walks in. Now, what happens on a reverse play when a good defensive lineman wants to chase the ball? He's been slow all week. Watch out for the reverse. Watch out for the reverse. Here he goes. He's chasing Keith Jackson after the fake. But no good. The ball went the other way for the touchdown. And Lasher kicks it. And Todd Thompson kick it off. Knocks it into the end zone. I don't think Thompson allowed any return. U.S. Amateur Boxing Championships coming up next week. Locked out in Tulsa and live except out on the West Coast. And uh, what this is really is it's the beginning of another, the formation of another Olympic team. Because every year after the Olympics have been held, here come all these eager young faces. And they slowly but surely mature into Olympians. It is always fun to watch them grow up. First down. SMU at the 20, King goes all the way around and then is knocked down at the 16-yard line, and either King went the wrong way or everybody else in the backfield did. <laughs> Somebody went the wrong way. He changed the play at the line of scrimmage, so if that is the case, he's audible, using audible right there, and nope, the linemen were blocking the left. King called the play and still went the wrong way. The linemen are blocking as if it was go the left, and King went to the right, causing the loss. Kind of dangerous. Sure, want to get some lost yardage. Lost four. Second down, 14. And, uh, lose another one. Back to the 15. That's Paul Miyazo, junior out of Kansas City. Through there. 
This was the option play, Keith, that they didn't have an inside face. And the linebackers then can move and make the tackle on the quarterback. Miliazzo, number 42, just moved right outside the tackle and made the hit on the team. First pass, first pass in situation. Here the Sooners allowed one point one. That's something else. First down for quarter. Third and about 15. Well, they still have a throw. That's a pretty good effort by King. And he's not that far from a first down, but he'll be ruled out somewhere around the 27-28. King made a great effort, and King's had an outstanding career, both as a runner and passer. Receivers were covered. He didn't want to take any chance throwing the ball deep on his side of the field. Oklahoma scoring on the last turnover, so he ran the ball. Oklahoma has had 24 rushes and one pass and yardage, and SMU hasn't made a yard throwing the ball. That's over kicking your coverage if you're not careful. Too. Dodge Carter came in averaging right at 44, and he turned that one over and got 50 out of it. Sooners have it at their 32. Talking about his favorite quarterback, Jim L. Holloway, says this. Uh, he is uh, probably the most talented quarterback at this time that we've had play here, other than my, my second team quarterback, Eric Mitchell, is probably physically more talented than he is. But uh, he is a very fine option quarterback, very poised, well-confident player, and uh, extremely exciting to watch. He is that. He is that. That was a sensational run that he made for that last touchdown. But there goes uh, Derek Shepard, their wide receiver, punt returner, the third of the three brothers to play for Oklahoma, from Odessa, Texas. Hope he's not hurt seriously. This is a junior. What are they looking at, ankle or knee? I couldn't tell, Keith. All right, OU's ball. First down, they're 32. Holloway, Perry, Tillman, Carr, Collins, Stafford all have carried the ball. Holloway has 70 yards. Lead all rushers. This is Tillman. And Spencer's got five. He thought the Oklahoma offensive line are getting some surge. Tillman did not need any resistance from SMU, so he had already gained three yards. I think SMU really would like to, if they possibly could, get some penetration. They've gone back now to their odd defense. They've changed defenses. No, they shifted back. Give him six on the previous carry. Call this second down and four. And outside goes Holloway for the first down. And then steps out of bounds to avoid abuse up at the 46-yard line. Oklahoma are so diversified today compared to their wishbone of five or six years ago. Here's Tim Brent. Keith, the medical staff here behind the Oklahoma bench is still working on split end Derek Shepard's shin. They think it is the tibia. They are hoping it is just a bad bruise, but it hurts him just to tap that bone. They are still examining it, and we'll get you an update as soon as we know. Hopefully there's no fracture, but it is the tibia, the big bone in the shin. Thank you, Tim. Doc's been helping keep me alive here for the last day and a half, too. Ball on this surge is up near midfield. Leon Perry carrying. This is a critical possession for the SMU defense. They have not uh, done much to stop the Oklahoma offense on three possessions. Two touchdowns and a fumble on the one. So SMU needs to tighten up and stiffen up and force the punt if they want to stay in this game. They're not penetrating. Yeah, no penetration. No penetration at all. The offensive guards doing a great job. Oh, there's some penetration. But actually, more than penetration, it was just a matter of him staying at home and letting the running back come to it. One thing that we all do in trying to defend the wishbone is over-pursuit. They have so much speed, the wishbone teams do, and you just want to take off with them and, and try to head them off at the corner, and it leaves you vulnerable, Keith. You're right on cutbacks and plays up the middle when you overplay in the pitch. Oh, look at the spread formation. Three receivers, Keith. Don't see that often. From the Sooners and all the way back to throw. Now he's going to get a little heat, but he's going to pop it out in the open, and there's a good saving tackle. 
by John Axman, isn't it? Number 65, who uh, reached in there and got a piece of him and brought him down, maybe stopped the score. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, well, it's not Monday, it's Sunday, first off. Pittsburgh Steelers out west against the San Diego Chargers. That'll be at 9 Eastern time, of course, 6 o'clock out on the West Coast. And then uh, here's one that'll have tremendous meaning insofar as the NFC West is concerned. The Los Angeles Rams will be at San Francisco. For the Niners, back to Rams, well, pretty good in Anaheim. They have just stretched out Mike Winchester. Hit a beautiful point up into the air. But uh, Gabriel De La Garza, the sophomore linebacker, he uh, it it ran all over it. If it, if it, if it Roughing is 15 yards in the first down. If it's running into, it's five yards, and it's not a first down. Let's see what he calls. No, it's 15 yards. There it is, right there. You have to give the kicker protection. He is vulnerable to injury when he has his foot up in the air. He has the right to kick the ball and then reasonable time. Roughing the kicker 15 yards. Reasonable time to get himself back. You can see he was knocked down before he had the reasonable amount of time. And the junior from Marietta. That's all right. I had a good punt, but I can do it again. He goes off. Redding leaving his team first down, just short of the SMU 35, and Oklahoma leading SMU 14 to 7, with 10 and a half minutes to play in the first half. And Jamel Holloway coming down on the up. Keeps it. Turns to about the 28. There's nothing prettier to me than seeing the triple option work to perfection. The quarterback, Holloway Keith, just reads his outside, coming to trying to make yards. And of course, 44, his linebacker on the right side. Now, he's got to come all the way across. That's Case, the linebacker, he dodges the blocker there of the halfback, the fullback, comes over, makes the play. Second down, three. Straight up the middle, Lydell Carr, and a first down for Oklahoma at the SMU 25. Oklahoma has that momentum, Keith. They're just moving that offensive line, of charging, controlling that 11 inches there, making room for the backs to run. But it's supposed to be a foot. 13 inches, I think. <laughs> <laughs> With the length of the ball, or whatever. <laughs> the 25 of SMU, first down Sooners, Holloway. Rides it off to Lydell Carr, and Carr takes a ride down to the 10-yard line. 11, make it the 11. Oklahoma, virtually every down, calls two plays. It's either or all. On this particular play, the SMU defense had gone to the wide side of the field, so they ran the option into the boundary. No one took care of the fullback, and therefore the, the uh, quarterback hands the ball to him. Now, Case, the linebacker, 44, just overruns. He's got the fullback. He's on an island all by himself. If he doesn't make the play, he's gone. He set up from under it. Holloway is caught this time, as they did get some penetration. I think it was Jerry Ball. Fighting his way over the center and brought him down for a loss. Ball has six tackles for loss, six sacks, and seven times he's tackled the ball care for a loss. And that's a perfect illustration of his quickness. He's only six feet tall, but he weighs well over 200. I think right now they list him at about 270, Keith. He's gained some weight during the season. Loss is back to the 14. Loss is three. Second down and 14. Timeout, Oklahoma. So the Sooners didn't quite have what they wanted here. And timeout to talk it over. Second down and 13 for the Oklahoma Sooners. The ball at the SMU 14. So far in the ball game, we've run the ball 51 times and had one pass. It was complete by Oklahoma. Unbalanced line, Keith, at the wide side of the field. Holloway sends it that way, rides it to Lydell Carr as fullback, and Lydell spinning around twice is brought down by Petey Briggs for a three-yard pickup at the original line of scrimmage. 
So now they need a little deception here. Here's the first downs. SMU six on that first drive. Oklahoma has been able to keep possession since then. But Keith, they go, Oklahoma goes to the unbalanced line to gain an extra blocker, plus the forcing SMU to change their defense. If they don't, they have them outnumbered, outflanked, and they can score very easily. Third down and ten. All the way. And going to the corner, Collins. Did he get in? Yep. He hit the outside of that marker, though, but still he got the touchdown call. This is the play that the Oklahoma staff added this week, especially for SMU, because of the defense strategy of SMU. Patrick Collins, number 33, showed his speed. One thing these Wishbone halfbacks have is speed at Oklahoma. Once they get turned down corner, watch out. <laughs> We've got a player that disappeared into the crowd over there and amongst the band, and we've got a timeout for him. Well, the Sooners are cruising right now with eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. OU possessions, they've driven to the one and fumbled, but then have come right back for three successive touchdowns by Tillman, Holloway, and Collins. And now we're waiting for Tim Lasher's extra point try to make it a 21 to seven ball game. Whereas SMU took the uh, opening possession and drove uh, 82 yards in 11 plays. And I believe that's an SMU player heard over there. Tim Brant's right there in the blue coat. Timmy? Keith, they're working on Frankie Thomas, the free safety. He's getting up now. He had severe pain all the way up and down his hamstring. At first, they thought it was his knee. They're going to take him to the other side now, and they're going to try to examine it further. But he has pain all the way up his thigh and the back, rather, the hamstring area, and all the way down the back of his calf area and in the knee area as well. He got hit from that side, and he went down in a lot of pain. Still is in a lot of pain, Keith, but it's Frankie Thomas, the safety. Keith, right. that would really hurt SMU. Their starting left halfback, Roderick Jones, is not playing today because of an ankle sprain. And then Frank, uh, Frankie, their safety man, is one of the best players that they have on the, on the defensive side of the ball. Here's, here's the drive, but let's look at the touchdown. It's a counter play. The quarterback reverses out and fakes to the left half back up the middle. Then he options down the line. And here's where Collins shows his speed. He gets a fine block from Jackson, the tight end, a good block from the weak side coming down. Now here, here's the block that Jackson makes right here. He's got to delay his block and, and try to hold the man up and block him out so that the ball carry gets there, he can, and he can use his hands today. That's different than the old days. He puts his hand on and pushes to the outside just enough, just enough for Collins to go in for the touchdown. Now we're ready for the extra point try. Here's Frankie on his way back to his bench. Keith, SMU could still be in this ball game. You don't make mistakes against Oklahoma. Fumble, set up a touchdown. Rough in the kicker, set up the third touchdown. Sonny Brown handles a step, and Lasher knocks it up and through. About eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. And it's now the Oklahoma Sooners 21, and SMU 7. SMU on their last possession had a chance, but they had a busted play in the backfield, and that stopped them from making the first down. Let's go to Jim. All right, Keith, then let's take a look at three more college basketball scores. Michigan today beat Florida Southern 91-67. Tarpley with 19 points for the Wolverines. Kansas beat North Carolina State 71-56. Kellogg with 23 for the Jayhawks. Washburn had 22 for State, which has lost three times now in early season. And Louisville bounced back from two defeats in the Big Apple NIT, beating Purdue, a team that number one ranked North Carolina had some difficulty with, 77-58. Back to you, Keith. Thank you, Jim. What a pretty day in Heartland. We're down in the 20s, my old last weekend, and snow and sleet started warming up Wednesday, and just gorgeous today. See, I don't see a cloud in the sky. Mm -mm. Beautiful fall day, except we're nearly in winter, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. 
The body tells me. Go do your hums, Tim. I think you got it in the second half. Here's the short hanging kickoff by Lasher. Taken up at it by Darrell Terrell, running back up around the 18-yard line, and he comes back to about the 25, maybe the 26. SMU field position has not been uh, anything to write home about. They're 18, they're one, twice on the 20, and now the 26. The reason, I guess, is that you get field position by moving the ball on, on the ground and stopping the other team. They haven't done either since that first possession. SMU hasn't. Look at the time of possession. You can see how one side is getting. Atkins is the tailback. King pitches it to him. Oklahoma intercepts it. Oh, my goodness. If Derek White doesn't fall down, he walks into the end zone with a touchdown. Keith, I believe they claim that his knee was down or that he caught the ball on the bounce. Penetration on the option play. Penetration on the option play. Cannot have it. Coming to the lower part of your screen, fake to the fullback. And then the tackle, the quarterback delayed and picked the ball blindly out to the tailback uh, guard. And did I watch Keith? Did it hit the ground? Atkins. Yeah, yes, it, did. it hit the ground. Hit the ground. Okay. Atkins, Atkins was the tailback. Right. He wasn't even looking. And the Sooners are camped. First down at the 24 of SNU. Mitchell is in at quarterback, has the ball around the corner. He goes, and he's just short. They put him out at inside the four. Eric Mitchell, 6'1", 195, a freshman from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. The triple option, he fakes the ball to the fullback. Nothing there. Fullback blocks his man. Now Mitchell sprints to the corner. The tight end is making the key block right there. He goes outside the tight end block. Cornerback is chasing the halfback. The safety man misses the tackle, and Mitchell goes down to the four-yard line. First and goal for the Sooner. Mitchell coming along with it. Still got it. Fumbled it. Oklahoma's got it. And they'll put it down at the 26-yard line. So, uh, Derek Reed of uh, SMU had the ball bouncing around in front of him. And finally, he was able to get it. Oklahoma had it. Then they didn't. And then finally, Reed covers it. Mitchell running the option play. Nothing there. Penetration right there. Forced Mitchell back. Now, Eric is very talented and likes to get away and reverse his field. So he takes off and to the up, up the side and fumbles the ball. You cannot dance the ball in college unless you catch the fumble in the air. It hit the ground, ball is brought back. And the Ponies have it first down at their own 26, where they were just a moment ago. And King gives it to Reggie Dupard. And Dupard will have a yard on that carry. In the first drive, Oklahoma did not adjust to the formation, means setting the flanker and tight end into the boundary. This series they have. To see is number 92, Lombardi Trophy winner, great record. Watch him break through the line of scrimmage right there on Heights in the center, reaches out, barely grabs the leg of the part, preventing and denying him a nice game. He got close to two yards on the carry. Second down, call it eight, with 7.20 to go in the first half. And timeout now is charged to SMU. So Don King comes over to the sidelines to have a talk with the coaching staff. 7.22 to go in the first half. Major Dupart has gone over 1,000 yards last three seasons. His coach, Bobby Collins, says this about him. He's as good as there is in the country. He's as good as there is playing. He's one of the best that's ever played college football. His records prove that. To the point. That's right to the point. In the Southwest Conference, opposing coaches would echo those remarks. Second down and eight now for SMU. He rolls. Rolls. So good. Well, shoot, he only had about three yards on the pass as it was. The mixed team golf championship, third round results. Look at that. Brother and sister sitting up there on top. Minus 15. 
McCumbrin Johnson, Curtis Strange, Nancy Lopez. And we'll have the final tomorrow <coughs> at the Broadmoor Country Club in Largo, Florida. You're going to be in bed tomorrow, Keith. You got that right. <laughs> Third down and eight. And uh, just a little late in getting that play underway. A step sooner, and they would have been out the back door and had a big one. But it's hard to be a step sooner against the sooner. Fake pass and run on long yardage. When you've got a back like Depard, you give it to him. Keith was right. The hole was there. But uh, Johnson, number 80, comes back in and makes the play. Very quick. Cool. Dodge Carter's punt. Sonny Brown. And Sonny finally winds up at about the 22. 52-yard punt by Dodge Carter. So he's knocked one 40, 50, and now 52. Keith, we didn't think we'd ever see the punting of likes of Alabama Auburn game last week. Well, that was something, wasn't it? Colbert of Auburn and more of Alabama put on a real show. How to punt football. That was a great football game. It was a sensational football game. Here's Tim Brent. All right, Keith, Derek Shepard is back on the field now. They have taken x-rays of his left leg. They were fearing the worst, that it could be a break in his, his bone, his tibia, but instead it is just a bruise. He can put pressure on it. He's wrapped it. He's going to come back. He's even going to try to play. All right. That's good news. First down on the 22. And this is Anthony Stafford. Three yards. Anytime, Keith, that Oklahoma doesn't run the wishbone, the triple option, Barry Switzer was telling me yesterday it was a waste down. With Holloway, he figures he ought to be running it every down. Well, Holloway back in there on this series as uh, Eric Mitchell played the last series and took him in for a touchdown. And carrying here is Lydell Carr. And Carr gets the ball up to about the 28. SMU are having a difficult time, like everybody else is trying to spin the wishbone from time to time, in stopping first the fullback and then the triple option. They haven't done, been effective with either the fullback or the quarterback. Unbalanced again to the field. SMU has not moved over. Well, they're not doing it there. They're just time they give it to Keith Jackson on the tight end reverse. And you know that SMU had looked at it after the Nebraska game, and they jumped all over it. They played it just like they did on the fake in the round, Keith. Yeah. They had everybody, and I don't blame them. That's all. Of course, the fullback busted the play. He tipped it off. Fullback went to the wrong side, and uh, he tipped off the play a little bit, and SMU had great pursuit on the, on the, uh, in the round. Forcing the punt. Good series for SMU. Mike Winchester. Should get a pretty good roll. Those old tail dragons do all right on this artificial curve, don't they? You've got to catch him, Keith. You've got to catch him. 51-yard punt. Keith, here, here are our games coming up in the NFL on Sunday night. We've got Pittsburgh and uh, San Diego, and Pittsburgh still in the hunt for the division championship. It'll be a big ball game for them, and seems to me like the Dan Fouts is having a great year. But here's the big one. L.A. Rams versus San Francisco 49ers, and the 49ers can win. They'll be tied, L.A., for the division leadership. They will uh, they will tie them uh, mathematically, but they will hold two wins over them, too. They will beat them earlier in Anna. And that's the deciding factor for the playoffs. King wants to go big with it. Got a man wide open. And for some reason, uh, Albert Reese, the tight end, doesn't keep his feet. He kind of buckled down to his knees. If he'd stayed on his feet, he'd still be running. The reason, Keith, is he knew he was so wide open. The safety man for Oklahoma had split, and Reese is so wide open. He says, please let me catch it. Please. And it was low, too, see? So he had to kind of really hold on the ball. Let's see what Casillas does, because right there on the quarterback, a fake of the running play. Now Tony releases. Uh-oh, right in the head. A little bit too much authority, perhaps. Yep. But didn't get a flag on it. Jeff Atkins. Atkins, who is a junior. Quick starter, long stride. He gets off the ball in a big hurry. Atkins 
was one of the most highly recruited players in Texas and chose SMU and has had some fine seasons. Last year, he rushed for over eight, nearly 900 yards as the alternate tailback. Second down and five. Atkins isn't going anywhere with Brian Bosworth greeting him as he made his cutback. Most of the yardage that SMU made in that first drive was on the option play where they faked up the middle and held Bosworth. But on this slow developing play, boy, did Bosworth just shuck that lineman, the offensive guard pulling around and made the play. Boy, he's big. 240 pounds, can run, and big enough to whip the offensive blockers also. Reggie Dupart back in at I back down for SMU. King to throw. Well, he had his man, number 14, came open for him, Jeffrey Jacobs, but he didn't deliver it to him, and the second look, he winds up looking straight at Tony Casillas and Troy Johnson. Well, he'd just been hit earlier by Casillas, so he's a little bit conscious of him. Couldn't help but be. There's the effort of the Lombardi Trophy winner right there. Johnson, one side, Casillas on the other, hitting him. And the Mustangs have to punt, and not a particularly good kick as it angles sharply out of bounds. And uh, only 29 yards on the punt. So we've got two minutes and 37 seconds to play in the first half with the Oklahoma Sooners leading SMU 21 to 7. We'll talk with Coach Joe Paterno, see the Oklahoma band during our potential halftime report. And Jimmy will have the scores. Last time we saw Army Navy was 7-7. And we're down into the second round of the playoffs, too. In 1A, 1AA, and uh, Divisions 2 and 3. Let's see. From the 28. Holloway stays at the quarterback, gives to uh, Collins. And Collins to the 31. Just the fake pass and run, something that Oklahoma has added to their offense. And this being the uh, two-minute offense, uh, run the fake pass and run and see how much pass rush you're going to get before you start throwing the ball. Now they're in a passing formation, Oklahoma. Take it to Tillman. Pulls it down, and Holloway is still working with it. If they get two blocks, you'll score, but they don't get him. He's out to midfield. And the first down for the shooter. T.D. Briggs, linebacker, brought him down. Keith, it's been a long time since the quarterback in America has rushed for over 1,000 yards. My record right here, 846 yards for Holloway coming into this ball game on 138 tries. So if he goes for 156, he's going to pass the 1,000 mark. And only starting five games. And he's got 102 right now. 14 carries. He's going to pass it. I meant pass oh, 1,000 yards. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fake pass and run. Ball number 34. All Southwest Conference last year. All Southwest Conference this year. Quick, strong, combines the, all the attributes you look for in a nose guard. Right there. Timeout. 123 to go first half. Sooners controlling right now 21 to 7 over SMU. 123 when SMU took that opening kick off and drove it down the far side of the field they seldom wandered beyond the hash mark spending most of the time on that side to drive it in. It looked like it might be a rough day for the Sooners. Oklahoma's ship has been righted here and Jamel Holloway trying to connect with Keith Jackson has it fall away with 118 to play in the first half. You make a mistake against the Sooners and the philosophy of the whole organization is make you pay and they have made SMU pay. And the Oklahoma defense being either first or second in most of the defensive categories nationally is having a defense like that Keith is like a family having more money in the bank they can spend in a lifetime. That's the way the coach feels about a defense like that. 
third down and seven. Holloway looks for Shepard. Nope, not Shepard. It's Lee Morris and a penalty flag. A little pass interference, Keith. Less than 15 yards, so it'll be first down at the spot. Maybe it's not pass. Yeah. yeah. Holding. Well, holding, it, if it's not pass defense, it'd be holding, which would be a five or ten yard penalty. Let's see how he calls it. So he's got to go back to the line of scrimmage and penalize. Here it is, right? Number 24, Reed, who's playing for the injured. I don't see how he calls that holding. There's no hole in there that I see. Well, maybe it was uh, somewhere else. No, that's where they dropped the flag well, right, at right at that spot. Feet. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. We have holding on the defense that the 10 yard penalty makes it a first down. Huh. To me, that's a bad call. First down. 110 to go. Holloway running and running and running out of time as they finally throw him down at the 40 yard line. Jerry Ball. Number 34. Jerry Ball can run. That's a perfect illustration. Uh, you've got a defensive line who has the strength, a defensive lineman who has the strength, but has the speed of a back. Now, he rushed for over 1,000 yards in Beaumont High School play. Right there, just keep fighting and pushing away, using his hands. Now, watch him run after Jamel Holloway. Right there, number 34. Brings him to the ground. Well, look at this. You know, people used to talk and talk and talk about all the coaches bear hat out there in the business. Well, the redhead from Decatur hasn't done too bad, has he? <laughs> look at that. Listen, these guys can coach. When you look at Hayden Fry and Johnny Majors and Jimmy Johnson instead of Bobby Johnson, obviously, and Jackie Sherrill and Barry Switzer, boy, they not only can coach, they've got some great schools to work with. Tradition. We're very proud of them in Arkansas, Keith. Very proud. Watching with their teams play with great interest second down now and uh, about 14 yards for the Oklahoma Sooners the Sooners have no more timeouts remaining at 102 to go in the first time. all the way zips it Morris caught it a little two minute offense for a wishbone team Jim Donnan the former quarterback Keith from North Carolina, coasted many places, including Missouri, came here, just done a great job with this Oklahoma offense. Third down and three, sideline too high. Whoa! Go back to the huddle and say to the quarterback, listen, partner, don't hang me out there like the old long drawers in a March wind. I can get killed. Well, we'll go for the field goal, I guess, fourth down. Lasher has kicked 11 in a row for Oklahoma. Watch this now. Watch it. He's defenseless. He's up there, hung out, waiting. Now watch Mark Vincent come by and give him a shot. Oh, you used to hate that. 46-yard field goal try. The long for Tim Lasher this season has been a 38-yarder, and had not, they disdained the field goal. They're going to go. They're going in down in three. They're going into the wind, Keith. And SMU now decides... Uh, they had to call timeout, Keith, because they had, they had uh, different people in the ball game. They didn't have their defense in the ball game. They had their people who were going to block the extra the field goal attempt. So Oklahoma had them uh, where they wanted them without a defensive team. Ken Hatfield pulled that on Baylor, lined up in punt formation, took a team out, but it was a second offensive team, and then ran the wishbone for a first down, 18 yards against Baylor this season. You better have yourself organized, otherwise you're going to get strung out, though, and, and wasted. That's right. Now they're going to try the field goal. Well, I think they are. <laughs> I don't think there's that much wind down there, is it? No, it's not that much wind. It was early in the day. It was about 10, 15 miles an hour, but seems to me it's the old saying, it calms down after 4 o'clock. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what Bobby Dodd used to tell me. Frank, if you can just wait and take, not have the wind in the fourth quarter after 4 o'clock, there's no wind. <laughs> 
and it has it has uh, decreased. Lasher, as I said a moment ago, 38 yards the long of the year for him. He's 0 for 3. Actually 0 for 4 beyond 40. He has a quarterly win coming more from the from the west than it is from the south. As we look at the big flag up there, it's blowing pretty good right now, but that's above the stadium. And I think the end zone seats are blocking out the wind, most of the wind. Tim Lasher is set for the field goal try. Sonny Brown will hold it. He got a leg on it, but slides right. Stayed right on him, never did hook back in. He had plenty of leg. And at 34 seconds to go in the first half, the Sooners are turned away. The snap was a little bit low, uh, and Brown, number eight, was trying to kick, see, it, it kind of hits the ground. Now he's got to pick it up and put it on the tee, and that it can be a little bit confusing. Let's see if Lashes slows down a little bit. No, he came in with the same rhythm, but maybe the ball wasn't uh, put on the tee properly. So with 34 seconds to go, SMU has the ball off to, to uh, Reggie Dupard and apparently will be satisfied to go to the clubhouse okay. in their current posture because King did not come out throwing. That's what we have at halftime for you. And Tim Brandt will be joining you at halftime and we'll do the second half of the ball game for you because this old Aiken body is heading west. Take care of yourself, Pete. Get well. King down the middle, intercepted. Into the arm of an Oklahoma shooter, number 29, Ricky Dixon, who's coming off knee surgery. And Ricky runs out of bounds as time expires. And at halftime, here in Norman, the Sooners, 21 and SMU, 7. Here's Tim Brent. All right, Barry's been a strong, a lot of turnovers. Uh, you looked a little bit flat when they started the game, though. Well, they're a good offensive football team. You know, they took the option. We have no support out of it. Frank knows in the booth what I'm talking about. Our, our secondary's got to support the option, and they've done a great job of riding the fullback and getting the ball pitched on the corner. They're a good football team. We, of course, we're a good offensive football team. We've taken care of advantages. First and goal at the four! <laughs> Tell me about the adjustment now. It looked like the defensive end's got more active. You did get the support on the corner. We've, we've changed uh, to support the option game. We're playing a little bit different. We're going to talk about the half. Maybe we can do a better job the second half. I want to ask you defensively now how you approach a second half. They have not been a great come from behind yeah. team. They don't well, throw them. Let's hope that holds true. <laughs> All right, Barry. Good luck the second half. So that's the what? situation what? down here. The Sooners lead it 21 to 7. And I'm coming upstairs to join you, Keith. <laughs> we are most. And normally at this point, our Tim Brandt would be conducting an interview on the sideline with Southern Methodist University coach Bobby Collins. But as we've alluded to a couple of times during this telecast, Keith Jackson has a bad case of the flu, has been suffering for several days. And after making a valiant effort to do his normal, wonderful job in the first half, our Keith has departed the premises and hopefully is going to be on a plane back to his home in Los Angeles pretty soon. So departing from his normal frontier on the sidelines and moving into the relatively comfortable confines of the booth, Tim Brandt now goes to work with Frank Royal. Take it away, Tim. All right, Lance, K.J. was playing hurt. He certainly solidified the quality of the telecast. Now he hands it over to the upstart. Uncle Frank's still here, and we're ready to go in the second half. Get after it, Tim. Randy Brownlee will kick off for SMU. Pat Collins and Leon Perry. Deep for Oklahoma. This one will sail through, and they'll bring it out and set it up at the 20. Defensively, these will be the players you'll see. Terrence Mann, 92. Jerry Bell, the nose guard. He's been very active. Wade Johnson will be the right end. Outside linebacker, Monty Gowen. Only 190 pounds. Cornelius Dozer. At the other side, T.D. Briggs and Kit Case inside. And they're going to have to really put some pressure now and realign themselves for this wishbone offense that Oklahoma has had so much success with in the first half. Side give is Lydell Carr. He'll pick up maybe two. The secondary. Roderick Jones is out. Andrew Livingston will take his place. He's from Fort Worth. Mark Vincent is in the ballgame at the right corner. 
Keith Brooks is the strong safety. Now, Frankie Thomas, the free safety, was injured. He pulled a hamstring. He went into the locker room. He will not return. It'll be Dick Sherrick, who is playing free safety for SMU. It's second and six, ball on the 24. Holloway takes it again, turns it up. Not much there. Kit Case, fine job at linebacker. The offensive talent for Oklahoma, Jamel Holloway. What a job he does running the wishbone. Spencer Tillman, Pat Collins, and Lydell Carr, the running backs. Derek Shepard is out of the ballgame. He may return in the second half for the bruised shin. Keith Jackson, the tight end. Eric Pope, Hudson, Yules, Ferrer, and Phillips. Third and six, 24. Oklahoma with the football. Holloway, who pitches outside to Tillman, there's not much there. So SMU's defense has readjusted, did a fine job on that series, and now we'll have to punt it away. Here are the halftime stats, Timmy, that you can see Oklahoma just dominated. Just outstanding play. SMU with that first drive, very impressive, looking for a chance now. That their first possession of this half to do the same thing and score a touchdown. Fourth and four, this is Mike Winchester. High spiraling punt. Andrew Livingston will fair catch it at the 39. Most of SMU's yardage came on that first drive, as we illustrated. They had 160 yards all on first down for Oklahoma. So it's been a first down, first drive ball game here. This is the offensive talent, for, or the defensive talent, rather, for Oklahoma. Steve Bryan, of course. Kevin Murphy has been very active in this ball game. He was part of the readjustment after that first drive by SMU. Nick Liazzo and Brian Bosworth, too strong, fine inside folks and linebackers. First and 10 at the 39. Take give, and Don King, the quarterback, keeps it. See that Oklahoma secondary, Derek White. 5'9", 185-pound freshman. Very young secondary. Dale Glenn, he's a junior. Then the two safeties are juniors and sophomores. This is David Vickers, a sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. It'll be second and five, the ball on the 44. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen. They load it up with a tight end on that side, and they give inside. Hard. He's met immediately. Tony Casillas, the Lombardi Trophy winner, came through cleanly, made the hit, and it'll be a loss on that play. Oklahoma coaches told me yesterday that you can't practice against Casillas. He just has an all-out speed, and you try to work your, the opposing team against him, he just destroys everything. He has only one speed, all-out. He weighs 282 pounds and has the quickness and speed of a man about 200 pounds, so that's why... He's the Lombardi winner. Team to throw on third and eight as a man, and it's complete to his tight end, Albert Reese. It'll be well short of a first down. No two offensive series, and not much happens. King, Dupart, Ashaway, Morris, and Jacobs will all leave the field now. Reese, Hemington, McKinney, Hudson, Richardson, Dunn. Dodge Carter comes on to punt for SMU. Sonny Brown is the deep back for Oklahoma. Brown lets it hit. And it, well, did it go out of bounds? Yeah, it's a one-yard line, Timmy. A two or three, wherever. It's down close. So now Oklahoma will be backed up on the one-yard line with 11.31 to play in the third quarter. Oklahoma, 21 SMU, 7. 54-yard punt. They have changed their marking. They marked it first at the one and then said it went through for the touchback, Frank. First down on the 20. Oklahoma. Give a little scissors counter. And there's not much there. Pat Collins was the running back, but Wade Johnson got there awfully quickly. In the last series, the SMU linebackers were running very quickly with the fullback fake, so Oklahoma decided to come back and run a reverse play. Make the fullback go the opposite way, but the SMU defense was not moved, waited there and made the play. Derek Shepard was back in the ball game for that play, so he's all right now. Nearly bruised shin in the first half, second and 11 from the 19. Holloway. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. 
Gary Ball is the big guy who got his hand on it. He's only six foot, weighs 255 pounds, but Holloway's only 5'11". Misdirection pass where Holloway is going to fake the tailback coming back, fullback going out blocking in. Previously, Holloway had gotten outside and ran the ball every time. This time, SMU contained him, forcing the pass deflected by Ball. Gary Ball is having a heck of a football game, leading SMU tackler with seven. Holloway, third and 11. Options the end, and he's not going to get the first down. Eric Sherrick is the man who came up and made the tackle from his free safety spot. SMU came out of the blocks quickly. 52 yards Dupart had on that drive. And they scored, made it 7-0. But Oklahoma readjusted, a couple of quick turnovers. Perry, a 17-yard run. Penalties and turnovers. The key in the first half that got Oklahoma not only back in the ball game, but also took that big lead. This is Andrew Livingston. Good coverage by Oklahoma. And so SMU will have good field position after that 41-yard punt. Oklahoma, Penn State, headed for the Orange Bowl. Should Oklahoma win here, there'll be the national championship at stake. There has been a lot said about Joe Paterno's comments about leaving football to the likes of Barry Switzer. Joe made a statement several years ago that Joe personally apologized to me for. He was a man enough to pick up the phone, call me, said, here's the situation, this is how it worked. I said, Joe, don't worry about it. Joe didn't know me at that time, and since then, Joe and I have become good friends. He remarked to Chuck Ninas, the CFA, he said, Chuck, uh, Barry Switzer's not what I thought he was a few years ago. So, you know, how do you know someone until you get to know someone? So that's, that doesn't bother me. Keith, uh, Tim, I'm glad that they have straightened that out. Both Switzer and uh, Paterno, two of the best in the country. Get back into the ball carrier. Best field position of the ball game for SMU. Casillas, the all-out football player. Coaches told me, and talking, trying to ask him, what does he do It makes him so great? Number 92. He just uses his hands. He's strong. He gets off the block and still has the muscle to pull the ball carrier down. Hold it to see. Frankie reminds me a lot of one of my former teammates in Maryland, Randy White, who is now playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. Boy, oh, what a player he is. Second and six to pitch outside again at Atkins. Atkins has the first down, I do believe, depending on the marking. Ricky Dixon. 29, the tackler. Barry Switzer was talking about the changes they were going to make, trying to get the halfback up quickly on the support on the option play. This time, Morris, the flanker, made the great block and let him get in the backfield. Here's what uh, DeBard and Ak Atkins have done for three years, just under 6,000 yards. That was SMU's first rushing first down since the opening drive when they scored. DuPard. In the previous series, Timmy, Oklahoma made the adjustment when SMU would shift their tight end from the left to the right. Oklahoma would shift their defense and line up strong to that side, and they've been very effective with the defense this half. Bobby Collins would be wise to stay to that short side like he did in that first drive, Frank. You know, this field has the, being down there in the first half, has the biggest crown I've seen on any field in college football. There's a 30-inch drop. Very conducive for runners like this guy, Ducard. He's out close to another first down. It'll be about a yard shy. It'll bring up third and about two. Remember, this SMU team had good success offensively. They hadn't put the ball in the end zone as much as they would like to, but they have really run it up against a great defensive team. Now, Bosworth, outstanding All-American linebacker, right here, number 44. What does he do? He comes right in and takes on that big tackle, chucks him aside, and goes in and helps on the tackle at some play. Third and two. Everybody lines up and loads up for Dupar's attempt at the first down. He's going to be close. I don't know if he got it, Frank. No, he didn't quite get it, so SMU will have to decide fourth and one. What do they do right here? There's Bobby Collins going to have to make that decision. He's saying, go for it. I'm behind two touchdowns. My defense has not been able to play effectively against the Oklahoma offense, so let's keep the ball. The best defense against Oklahoma is keep the football. What does he have to lose? Well, watch right here. Now, many times, SMU has thrown the pass on short yardage. They did that against Texas, and most teams 
they will gamble many times in this situation and slip the back down the field for the touchdown. Oklahoma should give them the first down rather than gamble. Back in Dupard, he didn't make it. Dupard is shut down. Good fill with the linebackers. Tried to go over the top, but there's no air. Oklahoma has get on short yardage. Teams have been successful very few times. Right here. What a play that is. Casillas gets a little penetration right there. Bosworth comes in, but the play is being made from outside by number 86. That would be Steve Bryan, the younger brother of All-American Rick Bryan. What a defensive fan. Oklahoma has, that's just something we commonly see with this great defensive team. Great isolation of Bosworth in that last series. Keeps that low center of gravity. Never lets him get into his body. Oklahoma, first down, 41. Now they can just melt the clock. Lydell Carr, we've got 7.50 remaining in the third quarter. Oklahoma has not had a first down this, this quarter since the half. SMU's made some sound adjustments. They're doing a good job of stopping the quarterback Holloway from making yards. They hadn't been able to get the pitch, and it's only the fullback. Lee Morris comes to the bottom of the screen. Wishbone offense. Holloway pitches outside on second and six. This is Tillman. On out of bounds by Dick Sherrick. What chances a defensive back got trying to come up and make the play with Keith Jackson, 245 pounds tied in, blocking on him. Keith just rode it, the defensive back. Right out to the line of scrimmage and uh, nice gain for Oklahoma. Talked about that crown and the 30-inch drop from the middle of the field to the sidelines. The running backs are running downhill. And the great ones like O.J. and Herschel used to always cut back against the, the grain, the pursuit on one of these fields. And then the tackler's coming up, and they're going down. It's third and one. Pitch outside. Plenty of room. Anthony Stafford. To the 25 and knocked out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Anthony Stafford, just a freshman out of St. Louis. The triple option, Timmy, is three plays in one. If the fullback to the left of the screen, if the fullback car could make a first down, he leaves it. Now Holloway comes out, pitches, the flanker makes a good block. Stafford has no one there. They had gambled to try to stop the gain inside, 32 yards on the play. Now Shepard, number three. His job is to take the half back, and we call that block right there, just stay up with him and keep him out of the play, and he does. Inside of the fullback, Lydell Carr on first down. Boy, it's very loaded with some youngsters. Every got time you turn around, Frank, it's a freshman or a sophomore. Well, Tillman is the only back in the backfield that's playing today that's above the sophomore class. Quarterback Holloway, just the freshman, Stafford, freshman, area freshman. Here's what we're talking about. You can see that Oklahoma only has seven seniors, only five of them starting. So this team is certainly one of the future as well as this year. Second and seven. Holloway. Nothing. Good pursuit that time by the defense. Kitch case Wade Johnson, number eight. He came over from the back side and made the hit. The Oklahoma fans are booing a little bit as uh, Case and makes the play, but he gets a little help from somebody else after the play. Now Case, the linebacker, number 44, lets Hope go by him, has the quickness to come back and chase the quarterback on the option play right there. Now the Oklahoma fans are booing a little bit about that play. I think that's just good aggressive football. Third and eight. Holloway to throw. Has a man wide open. Lee Moore. Touchdown. Oklahoma. Moore took him inside and just left him, Frank. It, what, this is a post corner. You go for the goal post. Turn the half back inside. Number six, uh, Livingston gets turned inside. Morris goes back outside. All Holloway's got to do, put it on the numbers, and he does, and it's a touchdown. Jim Lasher on for the extra point. And it's 28-7. to 7. So the Sooners 
come back with the wishbone and the pass to Moore. 28 to 7. Oklahoma, 28 SMU 7. This game's just about out of reach. We talked about it earlier, Frank. Not a great come-from-behind team, SMU. They haven't, uh, Timmy, and this year, but in the past four years, they've been outstanding come-from-behind teams, and they have the same quarterback that they've done it in the past. Don King, he just needs to get a hot hand. Todd Thompson's kick is high, and it's long. Livingston will not bring it out. Timmy, let's go back and look at the touchdown from the end zone. The fake of the option play. Right here, fake to the fullback. A couple of steps down the line. While this is taking place, the receiver, Morris, is making a fake on the 101 coverage, and you can see how wide open after he makes the fake inside. Isolate on Morris. Here he is going down the field. Going fake inside. Set up the defensive back. The defensive back turns. When he does, he's whipped. Now Morris open for the touchdown. Holloway right on the target. One of the strengths of the wishbone. Every play starts the exact same way, and the one wideout always has man coverage. First down, and this is Reggie Dupar. And they've got to start going to the air, I do believe. Well, SMU is a team that, as you've already pointed out, uh, Kenny, uh, they have to be close, really, because they're they are run and option team and a play-action pass. And when you get behind, uh, most teams like that get in trouble. But they can throw and they can run, so I think you're right. They will have to open up more. Oklahoma defense just outstanding. Has been all year, Timmy. King will have to get a hot hand. He has not thrown well when he has thrown. Second and six. Dupart. Great fill by Kevin Murphy. Right now, let's go downstairs. Here's Jim Lampley. Tim, the announcement made just moments ago at the Downtown Athletic Club in New York, the winner of this year's Heisman Trophy is Bo Jackson of Auburn. Uh, no vote totals are yet available to us, so we do, we do not know exactly how close the balloting was, but in what was obviously a two-man race by, uh, between Chuck Long and Bo Jackson, I have just been told that Jackson won by 45 points in the balloting all across the country. That becomes the closest margin in the history of the Heisman voting. The previous closest margin was in 1961 when Ernie Davis defeated Bob Ferguson, the Ohio State fullback, by a 53-point total. So by 45 points, Bo Jackson, the winner over Chuck Long, in the closest Heisman Trophy balloting of all time. Back to you, Tim. Great tribute to both athletes, Frank. Yes, it is. Both quarterback, the quarterback Long and running back Jackson have had outstanding careers. They've led their team to successful seasons. Either one of them would have been a, a good choice. My congratulations to Bo Jackson. That King pass to Reese. Gave SMU a first down. 32. King wants to throw again on first. He does, and he's complete. Ron Morris is the flanker. Here's Lamps again. All right, Tim, for one more great story. Navy has beaten Army today in Philadelphia 17-7 in the career of one of the greatest service academy football players of all time. Napoleon McCallum ended in a well-deserved victory on what was a great day for him. McCallum carried the ball 41 times, career high. 217 yards in carrying the midshipmen to the upset victory over Army. 17-7. Back to you. Okay, Lamps here. It is second and seven to 35 for SMU. King has hit two straight passes. The throw again. Pulls it down and now we'll run out of bounds. SMU came out this afternoon, took the opening kickoff, went straight down the field. Dupart at 52 yards, and SMU had a 7-0 score. But, oh, how things have changed since then. In the second quarter, Tillman scored for Oklahoma, Holloway scored for Oklahoma, and Collins scored for Oklahoma. It was 21-7 at the half, and since then, we just had a touchdown pass to Morris from 16 yards out from Holloway, and it's 28-7, the Sooners. Looking strong as they head toward Penn State and the Orange Bowl. This is Reggie Dupar. And what a tough afternoon he's had. Penetration by the Oklahoma defense on short yardage destroyed the chances of SMU making the first down. Tupper and Casillas were in the backfield and combined to make the play. 92 Casillas. What a player he is. The quickness. He gets to the backfield, runs around the block. He runs around the block of the lineman, gets a hand on the leg, and Tupper combined bring him down. 
Sonny Brown takes the fair catch, 40-yard punt, two parts, 79 yards. He had 52 on the first drive. That's the story. 258 remaining in the third quarter. We're at Norman, Oklahoma, with the Sooners lead SMU 28 to 7. Tim Brandt and Frank Royal. Keith Jackson left a little bit early today under the weather. He had the flu. Valiant effort the first half. He sure did. He <laughs> had uh, high fever when he left here to head back to LA. Well, we Oklahoma. Tim has had good field position. Mistakes by, by SMU have set up three of the touchdowns. First down at the 20 for Oklahoma. The loose bone attack to give inside is Leon Perry. Boy, he's big and strong. 220 pound bulldozer. But the block by Hudson, the sophomore offensive guard. Three carry into the secondary. Number 79, right there. Just a softball. All big eight. Offensive line weighs about 290, 295. Shepard goes out. Morris comes back in at wide receiver. Second and four. Reverse pivot. Holloway. Flag fly. Holloway across the grain. Got the move to the 40. Midfield. Walk down from behind at the 47, but there are flags. A little bit of probably holding it. Ill illegal use of the hands on the delayed play of the counter option. It was 27 yards, but uh, the officials will probably bring it back. Here we'll have the definition of the penalty holding. Right. The tight end, I don't know whether it's the tight end or the back, they both have very delayed blocks to make. It takes a long time for the quarterback to spin out, Timmy and fake and then come down the line in the opposite direction. Here it is. Right here, fake to the halfback, now delayed, coming out. See if we can tell who's grabbing right there. I guess they called it on uh, who was blocking number 99, I couldn't tell. That probably is the left tackle, Pope. We have holding on the tight end back. Second down. That is Oklahoma's first penalty in this ball game. Basically, mistake free. This offense has just been sensational since Holloway has come in as a starting quarterback. Well, with Aikman in there at the beginning of the year, I think Barry was trying to pass more. Second and 14 from the 16. Holloway. One hops at the Shepard incomplete. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football special Sunday edition. Pittsburgh Steelers and the San Diego Chargers. That game in San Diego. 9 o'clock Eastern time. And then on Monday night, the Rams and the 49ers that battle out west. Boy, and the 49ers, some kind of tap dance on the Redskins last week. They are coming on strong as Bill Wallace Walsh's team usually do. Offense has really found its rhythm. This is Holloway on third and 14. Intended for Leo Morris, or Lee Morris, rather, who had a step, but it was overthrown. Good defensive play by SNU safety man, who is playing in, in place of uh, Frankie, the starter, Sherrick, number 26, stayed back and was at home and defended against the play. So Mike Winchester comes on for Oklahoma to punt it away. He's had excellent hang time all year. High punt, not this one. Livingston take it on the one hop at the 48-yard line. I've never seen that, Tim. He, he signaled for a fair catch. The ball hit the ground and bounced, so he ended up catching it. But since he signaled for a fair catch, even though the ball hit the ground, he can't run with it. Twenty-eight to seven, Oklahoma in command here. This is what we have coming up for you next Saturday, boxing championship, the U.S. Amateurs. We blacked out in the Tulsa area. King drills the ball for an SMU first down. Jeffrey Jacobs was the receiver of the split end. This is the best field position SMU has had all day long. Getting the ball close to midfield, they can open up their offense. King rolling to the left. 14, Jeffrey Jacobs, wide receiver, curling inside. 
has a good cushion by the halfback, and he gets time to catch the ball before Dixon, who has missed four games, comes and makes the tackle. King drilled it. Close and rope that time. First and ten here. This is King on the keeper. Picks up four. Got one eighteen remaining in the third quarter. Last play was the option play that SMU had so much success with on that first drive. A good defensive team learns to make the adjustments. They're staying at home. King had no chance to pitch and had to turn up and get whatever he could. <laughs> and he was tagged by Tony Casillas. Look at the stats right there. 82 yards on the first possession. 128 on the next 11. King on second and seven. Complete inside of 30 to Ron Morris. A yard shy of the first down. Mark. It is paramount, Frank, that SMU get on the board and do it quickly if they've got any chance in the final quarter. And SMU will have the win to their back in the final quarter. S uh, Oklahoma's had it in this third quarter. Just kept the ball most of the time, even though they've only scored one touchdown. This will be the last play of the third quarter. King now five for five, 35 yards. Go deep in this half. Give to Jeff Atkins. He has the first down. Did he lose the football? No. Then it's going to be close. Going to really be close. Atkins did not twist and fall forward like he normally does. He got knocked back by that Oklahoma defense. I thought he had it. Now Oklahoma has stopped SNU on third down and short twice, on fourth and short once. And it has been a key factor in SMU trying to get something started. They couldn't make the short yardage conversion. That close. Didn't get it. Atkins had a chance had he been able to twist and fall forward. He would have made it. But Oklahoma linebackers turned him back. And here comes the Oklahoma goal line defense. I keep saying SMU many times fakes and throws off of this situation to the halfback down the middle. But Oklahoma's coming. They're not spotting the Second fourth down attempt this quarter. They failed the last time. They got it, Jimmy. Big. Gary Hashaway, the fullback, the carrier. So that's the end of the third quarter. SMU at Oklahoma. We'll continue after this message and a word from our local station. The plan. 60 degrees. When we kicked off, nice breeze blowing. Warm afternoon, perfect for football in Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners lead at 28 to 7. SMU, first down. This is Duke Hard, right side, with some running room. And he gets about six. Outstanding cut by DuPard to make that yard. Here are the stats into the third quarter. SMU has picked up a little bit at the tail end of the third quarter, but Oklahoma dominating on the ground. Very little passing in the ball game. Both teams have been favoring the run all season long. Of course, Oklahoma and the wishbone, mostly the run. The key stat there is Oklahoma capitalized on the turnovers. SMU did not. Second and three. Pitch outside of Dupard, first down, then some. Knocked out at the 10, and oh my, he was tagged. Ricky Dixon, number 29, is the man who took him down, and rather rudely. But the execution by King was outstanding. The blitz is on, going to the top of your screen, the fake to the fullback, that holds the linebacker. Then King goes down without even looking, a blind pitch, lays it back to Dupard, and he circles the Oklahoma defense. So, something, Tim, you don't do very often. Here's the block, number 23, Ron Marsh gets two men, a line to part outside room. First and goal to nine, Dupard right side to the three-yard line, and Dupard now is SMU's all-time second leading rusher. He passes Craig James, and now trails only Eric Dickerson of the Rams. 3,750 yards. Reggie Dupard earned that yardage. Him. He ran inside the block to slow develop his play. The block of the pulling guard and the leading tackle on the linebacker. Wasn't much room. He made it. He's impressive. 22 carries, 102 yards this afternoon. It's the nation's best defense.
This is Dupard. He's close. Dupard tried to get the ball across the plane. Touched out like he did, too. Oh, well, they haven't called one arm up to him. It's oh, there's two arms up. It's touchdown. Yeah, two arms. As Keith said earlier, it's a long way down there. That's 17-4 to the field. That's the second touchdown to him that Oklahoma defense has had scored on it in a long, long time. Here it is, second effort. Depard has scored a lot of touchdowns right there. Extra effort, and he crosses the goal line, breaking the plane for the touchdown. Brownlee on for the extra point. Snap to hold the kick, and it's blocked. Oh, my. It's been that kind of day for SMU. Steve Bryant is the man that got his hands on it. Steve Bryant is the younger brother of the All-American Rick Bryant in Oklahoma, number 86. See where he right up the middle and gets his hands up right there. And the kick is a little bit low, and Bryant blocks it, and we have the score 28 to 13. Well, 13-35 remain in the ballgame. 28-13 is the score here. We've got 13-35 remaining in the ball game from Norman, Oklahoma. Tim Brandt, Frank Royals along with you. Keith Jackson, I think by now, is on his way home to Los Angeles to get Will. Oklahoma's expecting an onside kick, Timmy. They've got nine people right up on the line. Brownlee drills it deep. This is Pat Collins, 33. Has some room outside, gets a block, and carries it up across the 27. Let's go downstairs. Here's Jim Lampley. Thanks, Tim. Once again, in case you just joined us, Bo Jackson defeated Chuck Long in the closest Heisman balloting of all time. Doug Flutie, former winners, have a vote. Can I ask you how you voted? Sure. I voted for Chuck Long, mainly because he came back for that fifth year and did an excellent job all season long. But I'm real happy for Bo Jackson. I know Bo very well, and uh, he's just sensational. And just to repeat what you said in pregame, you don't believe Bo should have been penalized for taking himself out of the Tennessee and Florida games? Definitely not, and I'm glad he won it because he won't have that hanging over his head. All right, back to you, Tim. Jim, those quarterbacks stick together, don't they? <laughs> Bumble. Collins picks it up on the hop, but they'll lose it, Tom. First time, first time, Tim, that Holloway has really uh, messed up the option play, faked the fullback. Now he should pitch the ball if he's going to pitch it right now. But he delays so far, doesn't know what to do. Now the pitch relationship with Collins, the halfback, is broken and the ball luckily for oklahoma bounces right up into collins hands and he steps out of bounds he's trying to get that read and you're right he's indecisive and it will be second and 18. hollowood this time he cuts up and gets up near the 30. so he's back up to the original line of scrimmage and they'll mark it just about the 29 have to give credit to the SMU defense other than the touchdown in the third quarter after a failure of their offense to make a fourth and, and one. SMU defense has adjusted and they've played outstanding football against the Oklahoma offense this half. Tell you what they're doing. They're doing, uh, they're running to the football a lot better. They are. Much better. They're not getting cut off. No, that's right. right. That's and exactly there's plenty right. of time. There's plenty of time. If we're either team will do something yet in the round. 1244. Jackson on the reverse. And SMU was not fooled. So as Oklahoma now will have to punt it away. Into and the you're win. right, there is time. And into the win again. Ben Hummel, the linebacker, number 45, stayed at home on the end of the round and made the tackle for no game. Mike Winchester is on to do the punting. There's your time. Andrew Livingston is deep for SMU, and he's standing just about the 39-yard line. So SMU will have excellent field position. Low snap. Fourth did he ever. Livingston back at the 24-yard line. So that 47-yard punt backs SMU up, and they will not have the field position they had planned on. Collins yesterday, the head coach at SMU, and asked Bobby if there was any validity to the rumors that he had spoken to or will go to Mississippi State. There's no validity to them at all. Uh, I've not spoken to anyone, and uh, my job is at, at Southern Methodist University. And what a job he has done. Timmy, he's 
winning record at SMU is over 80 percent. He was very direct and succinct. 12 minutes remain. SMU with the football trailing 28-13. They've got to come in a hurry and get some points on the board. Nobody can tackle like that but Kevin Murphy, number 39. He came from the middle linebacker position and made that hit. What a play. Number 39, All-American, All-Conference, fifth year senior, having been injured uh, last year and come back for his last season of play. You talk about tough corners. Kevin Murphy, Reed, and then you go inside with Bosworth and Midley Oswald. King runs about 45 yards to get a couple. And he's knocked out of bounds. Let's go back down to Jim Lampley. And a chance to ask one quarterback looking at another one. What do you think of freshman Jamel Holloway? He's outstanding. He does an excellent job of, of running the option. But the thing that makes him so amazing is that when he does make mistakes, he is a freshman. When he does make mistakes, he has the athletic ability to really cover them up. Is there a chance that Penn State will confuse him defensively? Penn State's going to have their work cut out for him stopping this kid because they haven't seen the option a lot. Very little this year. That's right. Back to you, Tim. Key play, Jim. Third and four for King. Three step drop after the fake. And he's not going to get it. So now what do you do, Frank? Now you have to punt it away. Yeah, they're still in the ball game. 11 something to play. They've got to punt it. That was a fooling play. Fake to the fullback. Hold the quarterback right over the line of scrimmage. But it didn't fool Oklahoma. Their backs were back there covering receivers. King had nowhere to go with it. That play is supposed to happen quickly, though. Quick fake and then pop that pass in a hurry, and it wasn't there. Dodge Carter, excellent punter. And he drives this one back where Sonny Brown will fair catch it at the 26. An extra curricular but no flag. Well, what they've got to do now is force some turnovers if they hope to get back in the ball game because time is melting from the clock. There's only 10.50. This is the third round results from the golf, the mixed team golf championships you may have watched earlier here on ABC. Brothers, sister combination, rinker and rinker lead. 15 under. They're tearing it up, Frank. Look at those scores. And then, of course, tomorrow the mixed team golf championships continue on the Bardmore Country Club in Florida. And he blasts that pickup of nine. He'll be just a yard shy, maybe, of that first down. Oklahoma decide to go away from the wishbone and run the power play. Turn, hand the ball off, let your blockers open up that hole right there. You can see the blocking of the line, the backs, and finally, I think Case made the tackle along with some others. Case in point. In the first half, Oklahoma 148 yards in the first down. Wishbone is a first down team offense, Tim. They have to do well on first down or it throws them into passing situations. But the triple option is three plays in one. And they can run the fullback, the quarterback, or the pitch left or right. That's six plays the defense has to defend immediately. And it puts them thin at the line of scrimmage. You know, some quarterbacks have their, uh, or the coaches have their quarterbacks with that predetermined read. They're going to go with that thing and it takes away the threat. But here, Holloway reads so well. I think this one gives inside to Tillman. And he reads the defender so well that it makes this thing go. You have to read it if you're going to have success with the triple option. Otherwise, it's not the triple option. But watch the block here on the great player ball, number 34. Let's see how they do it. Number 68, Phillips. No, it's number 55, Farrah. Right there. Now Phillips comes in, helps out just enough. Ball's got to come off the block, dive, but he can't get it. Nice kick. 9.45 remains. First down again, it's Stafford. And you got a good thing going for you, Tim. You repeat the play. Left, right, left, and they've averaged about nine yards a try on the isolation play. Just a handoff power, all the muscle that you've got going right at the heart of the defense. But the thing is, when you have such success on first down, it's just second down's a waste down, you can do anything. Case the leading tackler, number 44, two-year starter, right there. Wasn't fooled on the play, comes in, helps on the tackle. Not before a big game. Holloway. First down. And then some. Down to the 26-yard line. Jamel Holloway. Stops the fullback. 
you stop the pitch, but then they have a quarterback that may be the best run on the entire team. Jamel Holloway, just a freshman, been sensational since he started after the Miami game when the starting quarterback, Aikman, was injured. First quarterback to lead OU since Lott. Kate, rushing. Number 44. You can see what chasing the football means for you young players that like to play defense. You can't give up. Stay after it. Chase finally makes the tackle. This is Tillman. Holloway took himself out of practice Wednesday, checked into the school infirmary, missed practice Thursday, got out of the infirmary yesterday, and comes in and has a marvelous performance here this afternoon. He rested his legs. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. He's fresh today. He missed those two practices and uh, gets that uh, strength back in his legs. 129 yards and 40 passes for this young freshman who's going to be playing against Penn State. I asked Barry if he was concerned about his stamina after recovering from the flu. He says, no, we gave him a couple of shots of B12 vitamins. He's ready. Well, Barry, we talked about that. Barry said that's what he liked when he was a player. We did that at Arkansas when Barry was our captain. And some of the offensive linemen that aren't out there, number 78, starting left tackle. Barry, the, the, um, excuse me, the right tackle and right guard. Oklahoma's got their second offensive line out there. Oklahoma looks strong. What an orange bowl that will be, but you know Miami, and I still feel this, I think Miami has the best football team in the country right now. Well, we have some great football teams in the country. We have Iowa, who has a chance at the national championship. Miami has a chance. Oklahoma has a chance. But Penn State, if they should win, nobody has a chance but them. But it's going to be a great ball game in the Orange Bowl, and we've got one in the Sugar Bowl, and the Rose Bowl's got one also. Perry gets the first down inside the 15 to the 11. And here's Tennessee, who has come on strong at the end of the season, Timmy. Their defense has been outstanding. They're going to really be tested by Tester Verde, the quarterback for Miami, who came in for Kozar after Kozar turned pro. Tester Verde has had a great season. Great job by Daryl Vicky at quarterback, replacing the injured Robinson for Tennessee. This is Patrick Collins on the outside, inside five to the four, knocked out of bounds. They'll mark it. At about the three and a half. That's where speed makes all the difference. The right of your screen. If you want to see a defensive back, Vincent, number 15, is going to come up and nearly make the play. Watch Vincent right here. He's not blocked. No one's on him. All he's got to do is make the tackle. But he doesn't have the speed to make the tackle. Collins has so much speed, he just outruns him to the corner for the big game. It is critical against this type of offense to have some sort of containment. Quick support by the defensive back. And get in the face of the quarterback quickly. Then you're vulnerable to the pass. <laughs> <laughs> Holloway. Five, three, touchdown, Oklahoma. What an offense. Beautiful execution. The thing about the wishbone, number, number 23, four is going to be chasing Jason, a halfback, and keeping the Holloway from pitching, but there's no one to tackle Holloway. Number four goes in for the touchdown. This is Tim Lasher on to attempt the extra point. Perfect. 35 to 13, Holloway, 132 yards, two touchdowns on the day, and the Sooners are rolling. It's a good old-fashioned whooping. I don't think there's any question, but the fact Oklahoma certainly deserves its ranking, 35-13. Some thought that this game was one of those that SMU could jump up and bite you, but it hasn't happened. Because of this young man right here, Oklahoma, may be the most explosive offensive team in America, in this style of play, only matched by Miami with their passing attack. The two of them have probably the most explosive passing of offenses in America. Right there on the option play, Holloway takes it in. SMU has only been blown out once this year. That was by Arizona, and they were in every other ball game until today. This is Livingston, and he is nailed. Let's go back downstairs. Here's Jim Lampley. All right, Tim Brand, a pertinent question for Bino Cook. Surely the Orange Bowl will bill itself as the game for the national championship. What must happen for Miami to wind up on Well, time? remember, 1978, the year Alabama beat Penn State, Alabama got number one in one poll and USC in the other. 
it could happen again. Miami could win one poll if it beats Tennessee, and, and if Oklahoma beats Penn State, they would get the other. All right, back to you, Tim. All right, Jim, seven minutes and two seconds remaining in the ball game. SMU struggling. This is King. Going deep, and it's almost intercepted. No flag. There was contact. He was intended for Pleasant, and Derek Crudup was there, and there was contact, Frank. Well, the contact was incidental. It appeared to be both the offensive receiver, Pleasant, who has outstanding speed. Maybe one of the fastest receivers in America. And, of course, number 15 of Oklahoma, uh, Crudup, do kind of run into each other, and... Uh, could have been interference, but it'd been a bit of tough call. No question about it in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped in front of him and was using his left arm to fend him off. Nonetheless, it's second and ten. King, play action. Has the middle instead, throws, and it's complete. Ron Morris made the catch and runs out of bounds on the 35. This is the kind of offense that SMU has used for the last three or four years in the fourth quarter. When they're behind, they've been able to use King, scrambling ability, throwing ability, find the outstanding receivers. Morris has been one of the best in the Southwest Conference history right there. Ron Morris, number 23, good speed, came into this ball game with 28 receptions, caught 41 two years ago. Almost picked off by Derek White. Took the chance, made the gamble, and just missed the ball. King again. With room, looks for a block. I can't find it. Here's Jim Lampley again. All right, Tim. Earlier, uh, Doug, you told us that you thought Penn State could have some difficulty against an option team. How will Penn State play defense against Oklahoma? Well, in order to stop Oklahoma, they're going to have to change up their defenses a lot, try to confuse Jamal and his reads, who's got pitch, who's got dive, who has quarterback. And that's unlike Penn State. Penn State is used to playing basic defenses, basic coverages, and using their talent. That from a man who often had trouble against those basic defenses. Yours, Tim. This is King, and inside it goes to Reggie Dupard, and Dupard has another first down. Good the run. fact we haven't mentioned, Frank, when we talk about these teams and the Bulls and the national title is the fact that Miami beat Oklahoma here in Norman. You and Keith and I were here, and they beat them rather soundly, 27-14. Miami had a great ball game against Oklahoma. They were able to protect the passer and give Testaverde plenty of time. It was a one-sided contest. His score showed 28 to 14. Miami had a lot of yardage throwing the football and just neutralized the ability of the Oklahoma linebacker. And that's why Jimmy Johnson says they should be number one should Oklahoma beat Penn State. King going for it all on first down, and Ron Morris, or Derek Crudup, rather, was uh, the defender there and knocked Ron Morris out of bounds. But Morris had a step on him, and the ball was just thrown out that way. Jimmy Johnson has gained a lot of support from people around the country because Miami calls saying that we went into Norman, Oklahoma. We played them on the, in their own backyard, as we've already said, and beat them handily 28 to 14. There's Dupart, as we mentioned, has moved up to the number two spot. And SMU's all-time leading rusher behind only Eric Dickerson. Three second and ten. Ball on the 45 with 557 in the of the ball game. King. Incomplete intended for his tight end, Albert Reese. And where's Reese been? Reese has caught a couple of passes, and that's about all. He's an outstanding talent, big, six foot four, good receiver. But remember, the Oklahoma linebackers, uh, Jones and uh, Bosworth, are so talented that their coaches tell me they can play in the secondary. And yet they are big and strong, as we already know. So that's what why Oklahoma pass defense has improved. The Reese is Made only three catches today for 34 yards, and I would think dragging him across the middle by those linebackers would be rather successful. This is King on third and 10, and he's not going anywhere. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and Dante Jones, the weak side linebacker, tracks him down and makes the tackle. He's one of the people we were just talking about, Dante Jones, number 40, excuse me, number 50, just went across, all the way across, and made the tackle. You mentioned Testaverde for Miami. I worked at Miami Florida State game when I left you and Keith. And trailing by two touchdowns, he throws two in the fourth quarter and comes back and wins a very fine Florida State team. For the Miami with Testaverde throwing and High Smith and Mitchell running the football. It's a tough combination. SMU on fourth and ten has to go for it. King's in trouble, puts the ball on the ground. They'll say he was down, but that should do it. 
Oklahoma football at the 45. Troy Johnson, the right defensive end, is the man for Oklahoma who made that one work. We've got five minutes and seven seconds left. In Norman, Oklahoma, the lights are on, and I'm telling you, Oklahoma is riding high in the saddle, leading 35 to 13 with five minutes left. Eric Mitchell is the new quarterback for Oklahoma. Here's Jim Lampley again. Tim, with one final note on the Heisman balloting, you know, of course, already that Jackson defeated Long in the closest balloting ever. Third place in the voting was Robbie Bosco, and I think of that as a bit of a surprise. He was ahead of fourth place Lorenzo White and fifth place Benny Testaverde, perhaps a mark of the degree to which the balloting favors seniors. Bosco, of course, a senior. Lorenzo White is a sophomore, and Benny Testaverde, a junior, coming back next year. Here's Tim. So, Jim, it sets up an interesting race for the Heisman next year. Testaverde, of course, has to be one of the favorites along with White. Second and eight, and the ball's loose. SMU, did they get it? No. Oklahoma gets it back. Anthony Stafford, I believe. 25 is the man that got the ball back. Mitchell, the quarterback, was stripped of the ball as he's going down the line on option play. First leg, fake to the fullback. Now Mitchell goes down, he takes his hand off the ball and holds it with just his right hand, and then while he's trying to Dodge the defender, the ball slips out, and they're very fortunate to get it back. Barrett's man, 92, had a shot at it for SMU and just couldn't hold on to it. It'll bring up third and 14 with the ball on the 50. This is Mitchell. Tracked down nicely by Jerry Ball and Cornelius Dozier. Number 99, the outside linebacker. Ball. Number 34 is just a junior. Let's see how he gets involved in this particular play. Number 74, Bennett, the offensive guard, dives out to make the block. The ball runs around and chases the quarterback and helps on the tackle. Dozier, number nine, combining with him. 255 pounds. The ball can scoot Kenny. Kenny's gained weight. Now his coaches tell me he weighs 272 and six foot tall. <laughs> This is Winchester on to do the funny. Again, it's a low snap, and it's almost blocked. Fair catch, and they'll put it on the 22. That is exactly where SMU will have the football with 252 remaining. We've got a doubleheader for you coming up this weekend on the NFL. Special Sunday edition. Pittsburgh still very much in the hunt. San Diego Chargers trying to knock the Steelers back a notch. That should be a pretty good ball game. And then, of course, the Rams 49ers. Everybody out west is talking about it, the 49ers with the destiny in their own hands. Rams with a game lead. That should be a fine football game as well. I went down and watched the 49ers, Frank, last week in Washington, and they really have the offense running now. When Joe Montana gets going, I don't know of anybody I'd rather watch play. This is King on first down. Overthrows his man, and Ronnie Morris was wide open on the sideline. Oklahoma with less than three minutes to play very wisely backing up and letting the the defense keep everything in front and most of the receivers inside that's the ideal way to play in this part of the game leading as they are 35 to 13. That score may be a little bit misleading when you think about uh, when you look especially at the rushing uh, SMU 205 yards today rushing. But they turned the ball over. You cannot put the ball on the ground and win against Oklahoma. Roughing the kicker, running on fourth down and not making it, fumbling on the old 35-yard line, set up three touchdowns. <laughs> this is Atkins. You take away those three touchdowns, Tim, and you got your ball game. But mistakes make the difference in any ball game. They are passing the football the coaches have never been able to eliminate. We preach against mistakes. We coach against mistakes. We do everything we can, but they still happen at every level, junior high, high school, college, and professional. Roughing the kicker. We used to have to yell out the four don'ts of the kicking game. Down on the field, the, the punting team thought we were nuts. Well, we've done that all our lives. Uh, King throws the pass. It, it is complete, but it's not enough for the first down. Here's Jim again. And here's a flag. That's complete to Tony Shellman. Bino Cook, uh, an interesting note on Oklahoma's travel plans for the Orange Bowl. Yeah, I learned in the press box that they plan to go December 20th. If they would have lost it, we're going down December 26th. But they're going down December 20th because Coach Barry Switzer wants to spend as much time on the offense as he can. They haven't performed well in the Orange Bowl. Some of the old-timers are saying when Bud Wilkinson went to the Orange Bowl, he practiced twice a day. 
Switzer's only going to do it once a day. But he's going down the 20th. It's, they're going to lose money going to the bowl. And in an interesting oddity, they're going to be staying in the same hotel with Penn State. Yes, uh, uh, Oklahoma had to okay that. I think it's great. The kids will get to know each other and only be enemies for 60 minutes and friends for life. Now that we've been here to see them, which is a rarity for us, how good do you think Oklahoma is? I think, I think they're going to play for the national championship, but I think Miami has every right to say, hey, we came down here and won. They have a right, but that's why they're going to play. They're going to find out who's better. How good do you think Oklahoma is? Do you think they're the best team in the country? We're gonna find out. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll find out on New Year's night. Hedging his bets all the way. He Mr. is. Cook. Jim, he's evasive. <laughs> Intercepted. Oklahoma, Scott Girl has the interception. He's bringing it back to the 30. He has a convoy in front of him. Touch back to the 20. And here comes Oklahoma again. They get better looking every time I see them. 42-yard return by Garl. Scott Garl, another freshman. Here King just throwing the ball as far downfield as he possibly can. Garl, number 49, comes down with a football. Right there. He was a walk-on. Earned a scholarship. Now he makes the nice run. But, Tim, I'd like to say about the best team in America, I think Oklahoma has more speed than any team in America. And I think Penn State has more closeness and great coaching to go with them. Although Oklahoma has the great coaching too. It's going to be a heck of a ball game, as is the game in, in the Sugar Bowl. Miami is just as good as Oklahoma, who's just as good as Penn State. And I haven't seen Iowa. I don't know about this. Well, I'm going to tell you something the way I feel, and it's just my personal opinion, having watched both ball clubs. I think Miami right now is the best ball club in the country. Well, they certainly proved it today. I, we saw them here when they beat Oklahoma 28 to 14. The one thing that remember about bowl teams, running teams do not fare as well in bowl games as passing teams. And I think that's the reason Barry Switzer is going to Miami on the 20th of December to give him plenty of time. Good ball foul, personal foul, clipping on the offense. It'll be second down. To give his team plenty of time to hone up their running game, which is the most difficult part to prepare after the season is over and getting ready for the bowl game. Miami doesn't have a bad running game with Bratton and Highsmith. Second and 26, we've got 133 remaining in the ball game. This is Leon Perry, and Perry puts the ball on the ground. And I think they got it back. The safety man for SMU really puts a lick on Perry. 220, trap play right up the middle. Number 26 comes right after him. Sherrick, who is substituting for Frankie, the, the starter, makes the play, fumble, but Oklahoma recovers. Al Larita, Al Larita is the guy who recovered the football for Oklahoma. It'll bring up third and 13, the ball on the 23. Okay. And we're inside a minute, Frank. Perry rambles down to the 10. Then the, the key in the Orange Bowl game is can the Penn State offense make enough yardage to keep this Oklahoma defense offense on the sideline. The starting point for Penn State has got to be keep the ball, move the ball against the number one defense in the country so that they don't have to play defense against this explosive offense of Oklahoma. Fourth and one, 20 seconds left. The fans want them to go in a hurry and want another score, but I don't think Barry will do it. First down with 12 seconds left, but the clock continues to roll. And that should just about do it. <laughs> the fans want more. We just went through this last week down in Miami against Notre Dame. So that's the end of the ball game. And our final score, Oklahoma 35, SMU 13. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Chevrolet. We invite you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86 by exceptionally smooth Michelob, the beer of choice for people who are moving up. Where you're going, it's Michelob. By the U.S. Marines, we're looking for a few good men.
and by the people of Rockwell International, where science gets down to business. Once again, the final score, Oklahoma 35, SMU 13. Thanks to Todd Berry, our spotter, and Dave Burton, our statistician. Stay tuned for the updated highlights and scores in today's sports action on college football scoreboard. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United.